What's up, Data Pipeliners? Welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. In today's episode, I'm going to show you guys two tricks that you can use to better optimize your Kedro and Jupyter Notebook workflow. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I have a Space Flights project open up for us. Let's go ahead and start a Jupyter Notebook. This time, we're not going to be using Kedro Jupyter Notebook, we're going to be using the native normal Jupyter Notebook. Now the first trick that I'm going to be showing you guys today has to deal with loading your Kedro context. Let me move this out of the way. For the first trick, I'm going to show you guys how you can more effectively and easily load your Kedro context. Previously, the way that I showed you guys to do this was by importing from Kedro Framework context and importing load context. Then what you do is you point to the path of your Kedro project where the dot Kedro YAML file is located. And then loading up the context this way, you can get access to the entirety of your Kedro project. That includes the catalog and all the entries that are in that catalog. Now, the problem with this approach is that you don't have cool functions such as the reload Kedro line magic. And so without this line magic, it makes it a little bit harder to reload your catalog. So say, for example, if we were to make a change to the catalog, what you would have to do is we'd have to restart the entire notebook to load that change in. But that reload Kedro line magic would instead do that for us. So, in order to get access to reload Kedro line magic, if you are not using a Kedro Jupyter Notebook, it's actually very simple. What you want to do is you use the run command inside of the Kedro, I mean, sorry, inside of the Jupyter Notebook. This is the run line magic. And you point to a special folder that is inside of the Kedro project. So, if we go back to our iTerm really quickly, you can see here uh, we have inside of the inside of the directory, we have a .ipython folder. If you look inside of that ipython folder, you will find some ipython uh, settings. And the one that we want to use is the one that is inside of profile default startup. And it's this one right here, this 00 kedro init.py file. So what we can do, we can actually just grab that directory right here. We're gonna copy this. And then we can load that into our current Jupyter Notebook. So if we go into run and we pass in that directory, and then we also pass in the file name, which is kedro init.py, running this guy will actually load all of the Kedro line magic tools into our context. And now we can use reload Kedro line magic in order to reload our catalog. Isn't that awesome? And so no longer. Are you stuck in the days of having to load your Kedro context? You could just use this line magic and get the reload uh, Kedro line magic built in. That's the first trick I'm going to show you guys today. The second trick, and this one is really cool. I just got this, uh, I just saw this recently in the documentation. That's the ability to translate your Kedro. Jupyter Notebooks directly into Kedro nodes. Now, let me show you how you do this. Previously, in our three-part series of Jupyter to Kedro, we were creating nodes inside of our Jupyter Notebook and then manually copying and pasting them inside of our Kedro pipeline. Actually, that's totally the wrong way to do it. What you can do instead is you can take advantage of Kedro's Jupyter conversion function. So let me show you what that looks like here. Let's say, for example, I have this node right here. It takes a data frame and just returns another data frame. And let's say I have another node that may like take another data frame and then just return the length of the data frame here. So let's just call that like this. Let's say I have these two nodes. Um, you can imagine a case where you have not only two, but maybe like three or a dozen, two dozen nodes inside of your Jupyter Notebook. Obviously, uh, that's going to be really a lot of work to do this copy-paste. Well, 
Instead, what you can do is this. Check this out. If I go to view in the top here, and I go to cell toolbar, and this thing called tags. If I open this up, I now have the ability to add tags to every single one of these cells. And now here's where it gets interesting. For the cells with nodes that I want to save, I can actually tag them with the node tag. So I'm going to add this tag right here. And then I'm going to add this tag right here, node, node. And then, of course, I'm going to save the notebook here. So save and checkpoint. Now, here's where it gets really cool. What I then do is I open up my iTerm, and then I type in Kedro Jupiter Convert. This command allows me to take a Jupyter Notebook and convert it into a Kedro Node file. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and point at the notebook that we want. We're going to convert our untitled IPython notebook. We do the conversion, and out pops a brand new file, which contains our nodes. And right here, it's underneath the source and then the project directory nodes. And then right here, untitled.py. That's because our notebook is called untitled. And if we look inside of here, we can find our two nodes, fake node and data frame length. And again, this is so cool because you can pick and choose exactly which nodes you want to bring in. So for example, if I get rid of the fake node, I save the notebook again. And then I run the command. We do the conversion once more, overriding the previous one. And look at that. Only data frame length exists now inside of that file. So this means that you can take all of your Jupyter Notebooks quickly and easily set them up to run with Kedro and then convert them into the Kedro nodes that you need. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure that you button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are a pipeline inc. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>